In October 1918, the end of World War I was merely a month away, but the German submarine fleet was still trying to salvage some honor from defeat by continuing to sink shipping. The mail boat Leinster was sunk with 501 deaths just 12 miles off Dunlira, then Kingston. Until the recent deployment of the high-speed catamaran, there was no faster mail boat between Ireland and Britain than the Great Leinster. It left this pier here at about 8.50, roughly an hour later, and the first torpedo was spotted, and it, it crossed the bow, it missed. The second torpedo struck it on the port side, well far as in the post room. But the ship came around um, with the intention, I suppose, of um, trying to minimise the target or even returning to Dunleary. And um, another fork torpedo was fired and it, it hit it in the, the starboard side, in the, um, in, in the centre of the ship. It was a massive explosion and the ship went down quite quick. I think it all took about 10, 12 minutes. On the morning of the 10th of October 1918, the RMS Leinster left the pier behind me here in Don Leary, bound for Hollyhead. The seas were rough and the wind got up just as it left port, but the conditions were the least of the dangers for the 770 passengers and crew on board the vessel that day. In October 1918, after four years and two months, the First World War was drawing to a bloody end. The Allies had breached the German defences on the Western Front and the German army was in full-scale retreat. It was only a matter of time before the war would end, but the Germans were determined to fight on to get the best possible terms. That included the policy of unrestricted submarine warfare, which included all Allied vessels, even merchant ships. As the Leinster passed the Kishbank Lighthouse, a German U-boat, lying in wait, fired three torpedoes at her. More than 550 people were killed that day. It was the worst ever loss of life on the Irish Sea. My grand-aunt, Sophia Violet Barrett, tragically was lost on the Leinster. So Violet joined the St John's Amherst Brigade about 1914. She was a voluntary aid detachment known VAD. Uh, looking after wounded soldiers. She was 34 years of age and she was engaged to be married, so this was her last trip, but tragically, um, all that was cut short. Of all the various civilians on the ship, there's one, one particular family that stands out, and that was the Gould family from Limerick. The father had gone over to England to work, and the entire family were moving over to join him. And of that family, the mother and the five children there was only one of the children survived. More than 350 military personnel drowned on the RMS Leinster, and half of them are buried here. This is Grange Gorman Military Cemetery in Dublin. It's the largest British military cemetery in Ireland. And most of these men were either home on leave in Ireland or they were convalescing here. And the tragedy for them is that had they survived the sinking of the RMS Leinster, they most likely would have survived the war because the war ended just a month after the sinking. This is the grave of Private Thomas Woodgate from Callan, County Kilkenny. He joined the RAF just a month before the sinking. And his gravestone here states that he was aged 18 when he died, but actually he was only 14. He lied about his age. And this makes him probably the youngest Irish battle fatality of the First World War. Several families also drowned on the RMS Leinster. This memorial here is to the Campbell family. George Campbell, a Royal Navy officer, Eileen Campbell, his wife, and their only child, their four-year-old daughter, all perished in the disaster. Before the sinking, 
The German government had sent out peace feelers to Woodrow Wilson, the American president, asking for peace terms. In the aftermath of the sinking, Wilson replied to the Germans in pretty harsh terms, saying that among other things, that while they were asking for peace, they were torpedoing merchant ships and uh, killing civilians. We often hear that the war ended on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. Amazingly, the Leinster was sunk on the 10th hour of the 10th day of the 10th month. My grandfather was lost in the sinking. He worked for the GPO in Dublin and he was on the boat in the mail room and uh, as uh, history tells, the first torpedo missed, the second torpedo hit the mail room and I think of the 22 employees, uh, there was only one survivor, so 21 of them were, were uh, lost and, and my grandfather was one of them. My grandfather was William Marr. He dived in about 13 times to save other people to get them onto the raft. And with the result, he became known as the hero of the Leinster. The sinking of the RMS Leinster was not only a tragedy for Ireland, it was in many ways a tragedy for the world. Four days prior to the sinking, the German government had contacted US President Woodrow Wilson looking for peace terms. Four days after the sinking, Woodrow Wilson responded by saying that he wouldn't engage with any country which had sunk merchant vessels. As a consequence of that, the First World War went on for another month and tens of thousands of people were killed. For that. And what of you boat one, two, three? Four days after the Leinster, it slaughtered the little freighter Dundalk off the Welsh coast. Less than a week after that, it disappeared. Presumed to have hit a mine, it now lies in the same water as its victims.